emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay. So this is the course content which uh, which we will be discussing as a part of this course. We have four modules. One is module one database concepts. So we will see the basics of database concepts like what is database application and uh, and how to test the application uh, normal application and how to test the database management system. So it is actually DBMS. Okay. Okay. So backend versus front end testing. So if someone who has attended the QA course they would have uh, they would have known how to test the front end testing so we'll try to compare them with the back end testing so how to do how to do uh, database testing and we'll also show uh, we'll also see uh, what should be uh, what should we test in the database so this one is sorry i i i was on mute okay so now i think you're able to hear right all of you okay okay so we are going to see uh, this is the first module database concept so we are this is completely more of theory part so so this will be like uh, discussing on what is database application and uh, backend versus front-end testing how to do uh, data QA uh, testing data and who is responsible what is the role of QA database tester so all those things we are going to see uh, we are going to see as a past as a part of this first module so I thought I'll I'll come back to this uh, module after we see some introduction about uh, technically if we get some details uh, again if we come back to this section we will get more understanding so so we'll be starting with uh, the second module today uh, and then we'll come back with some basics on this we'll come back to the first module so that all of you will get some solid understanding so of the first module as the first module is completely theory so for now you can keep it in mind a database is a collection of tables okay that should that should be fine for now a database is a collection of tables and we have so many objects inside that like we have you know, functions we have stored preserves we have triggers so and we have so many things views like that we have so many things so we'll come back to the theory part again uh, when we when we are done with the uh, basic sql okay so today we'll see um, we'll see how to create a table how to create a table and what are the constraints we have uh, like what are the constraints like we have primary key constraint or we have check constraint we have not null constraint so we have what is a not null so we'll see all those things today the goal for today is you should be very clear with the creating database creating table creating table okay so for that let me open sql server so before that let me close this okay so now if you have installed SQL server you will see something like this all programs Microsoft SQL server 2008 R2 and SQL server management studio so I'm going to select this option SQL server management studio when I click on this okay so now I need to enter user ID password which I have given while installing so now uh, if I select Windows authentication so normally there are two, ty two types of authentication for SQL server one is Windows authentication and the second one is SQL server authentication okay so for those who just joined I repeat again uh, I am currently running on UPS so in case if uh, if the call gets disconnected or if you see me offline uh, so we'll stop it here for today uh, but we'll definitely continue from the next class so okay okay now I'm selecting Windows authentication I'm clicking on connect
okay so sql server is one of the databases which we have so i mean one of the tools which we have like we have other tools like um, oracle db2 or we have mysql we have uh, sql server we have ms access so all these things are different database softwares which we have and the current course which we are going to learn is uh, primarily focusing on sql server but still in case if you if you uh, want to attend interviews for any other database or or if you get a call saying like we have openings with for qa uh, who knows uh, who knows oracle uh, you can even apply for that uh, you can tell them that uh, you have sql server experience and oracle and sql server more or, le more or less same okay now the syntax for all the database tools are same you have the same way how to select the records uh, how to update how to insert how to write stored procedures all all the syntax will remain more or less same for oracle sql server db2 mysql or any other database okay so for those who have uh, who have issues in um, who have issues in installing uh normally um every class will be of one and a half hour but today as um i don't have uh, power in my home like today we might get disconnected in the middle but normally every day the course will be for one and a half hour okay any other thing okay for those who have issues with installing um i we will do one thing uh before next class um or or after this class i think if i have power like what i'll do is after this class we will spend around 15 minutes to troubleshoot uh, the issue which one of the student has so that others will understand how to install okay okay so now uh for for this course i'll be creating a new database so this is how we create a new database so so these are the so i just logged into sql server now i'm going to create a database so how to create the database so here i need to write create database and i need to give the name of the database okay from now on we'll be using uh, we'll be using a database name called uh, dbt dbt new batch okay you have to remember this database so dbt new batch or dbt so we can have like 24 24 may batch okay so this is the database which we'll be using uh, throughout this course so i'm going to create this database create database database name and i'm executing this so when i execute this i need to i need to select here i need to click on this select whatever line you want to execute and click on this execute button in sql server so once you do that database so command success completed successfully that means the database has been created so here you will see the list of databases here so these are the databases which we already have so we have just created this database called db2 db2 uh, dbt24 may batch so if you want to see that in the list you just right click on this databases and refresh it so let me do right click on this and then refresh now you can see that i have created a database called db dbt 24 may batch so so we are going to create tables or whatever we learn we are going to create inside this database so a database is for now assume that a database is collection of tables but we'll see the complete definition later okay so now i'm done with creating database the syntax is create space database space database name now if i want to create any tables in this database all i need to do is i need to click on this i need to click on this right click right click on this new query right click on this and i can select new query or there is other way so before creating table yeah we will see all that uh, what is schema and all those things we will see uh, we will see down the down the line so for today we will focus on how to create table now so before creating a table ensure that ensure that your respective database is selected here so before before going to uh, before going to create table 
see as of now master database is selected so we are working on dbt 24th may batch data database so for sure without uh, i mean you have to select that here otherwise what happens is when you create data table or something that will be created in this database and you will be searching here i have created table but i am not seeing here a lot of students ask me like i have created a table but i am not seeing in the tables list when i expand my database so so for example let me create a simple table create table employee and then i need to write here emp id uh, integer and emp name i'm giving as varchar 20 so varchar is the data type uh, when we want to uh, where the characters can vary between between 1 to 20 up to 20 characters so integer is for a number so now i just wanted to create this table so when i create this now it is created successfully so students will ask me i have created this and even i have refreshed this table refreshed this database but when i expand this table i'm not seeing the table here inside this table so because what is the database they have created now in which database they created now this table is created in which database yeah yeah the table is created in master database because the currently master is selected so 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 what we need to do now so we need to select here the database testing 24th batch and then run this command again before doing that let's drop this table in master otherwise uh, we don't need to touch master database so let's delete the table let's drop the table drop table employee why we are dropping this because by mistake we created this in, in master database so so all you need to do is select this line for sure select this line and click on this execute button so now this table has been dropped from master database now let's try to select the db2 dbt 24th batch may now create this table again this is how we need to create so now when i execute this and now when i refresh it when i refresh it right click on this refresh it and and expand this tables you can see that employee table is here okay so this is how you need to create uh, you need to ensure that you create the tables in the correct window in in the correct database okay and one more very important thing before executing this drop or something you need to be very very careful very very careful before executing drop or delete statements because because when you do that you will land up in other company you have to go to other company because you have to be very careful what i mean is you will be removed so we should be very careful dbo stands for database object so here we are seeing dbo that is the schema so uh, good question so here we are seeing dbo dbo stands for database object that is the default schema for sql server so we'll see that what is a schema and all we'll see that later but dbo stands for database object okay now okay good good news i got power so i mean we have i got power in my home so we'll continue for one and a half hour okay so now now let me let's see how to okay okay so this is i got a question saying like uh, what are objects what are objects and uh, also one more question can you repeat drop again how did it took table in the database uh, created okay now i i repeat the concept so now if i want to create first first thing i want to create a database so please focus on the class so first thing i want to create a database for the course so what i did i created a database so this is how we create database create database database name is uh, i gave some name as dbt 24th may so once i execute this test one so i'm giving this database name as test one when i execute this it will create a database for now we have here we have one two three four five databases i just created test one database so verify that to verify that i need to refresh here right click on this refresh so i can see that test one database has been created now if i want to create any table in test one database so i need to select that test one here i need to select that database here and then i need to do a create table statement so so this is how you create a table create table employee 
and then you need to give the columns for the table so first column is employee id integer and i'm giving employee name varchar 20 now when i execute this it this table will be created inside this test one database so let me select this and then execute this before executing ensure that the correct database has been selected otherwise it will create in some other database which is not intentional so now let me select all this line four lines and execute this now the table has been created in test one you just need to expand this so before that refresh it right click on this refresh refresh it now expand this and expand the tables and you can see that the table has been created here now if you want to delete the table if you want if you don't want this table anymore all you need to do is drop table drop table you need to do give that table name employee okay so drop table followed by table name will remove the table will remove the complete table so if I execute this and if I execute this and if I refresh this test one database refresh this and I'll not see the table anymore because the table has been dropped okay drop table will remove the table create table will create a table so now now which is the database which we initially thought of started working from for this course what is the database name which we thought we'll be using for this course yeah so so we are going to use uh, may 24 batch so now what i'll do now i don't want this uh, test one database so so we'll see all the commands all the ddl commands we will see uh, we'll see down the line for today we'll focus on creating a table and the constraints so i got a question saying uh, we can you show truncate table yes we will see all the commands as a part of this course this course is 50 percent uh, uh when do we use okay so so we'll cover 50 p i mean this course is primarily uh 50 percent development and 50 percent testing so once you're done with the course if you think uh, you want to move to developer as a developer you can even do that uh, or as a tester you can even do that so this course will give the give you the flexibility uh, to be a sql server developer or a sql server tester okay now now um okay let's focus on creating table again so which database i want to drop now i don't yeah okay so which table i want to drop now i mean which database i want to drop now i created just for explanation again i sh i don't want the database which is the database i should drop it now yeah so i created test one database let me drop the database so even for dropping the database it is same thing drop database and give the database name test one okay and then execute it okay so okay so why i cannot drop this can anyone guess why i cannot drop this database you can see the error you can see the error here like cannot drop database test one because it is currently in use so i cannot drop it by by selecting the test one okay so it will not allow me to drop it because i'm already in that database and i cannot drop it so what i need to do i need to select some other database let me select uh, master or, or any other database now let me try to drop this database see now now the database test one is dropped but still i'm seeing here so i just need to refresh it so right click on this databases just refresh it so now i don't see test one database here okay now uh, again i got a question saying what is the difference between drop and delete command we are going to see that again uh, in the course so definitely uh, by by the end of three classes you will be very clear with all the commands ddl commands dml commands and dcl commands okay so now so just to summarize till now we saw how to create a database create database database name and we saw how to create a table inside that database and also we saw how to drop a table or how to drop a database okay so now now let's focus more on creating a table so let's select our our database which is db2 and let's expand tables so now how to drop this table all of you ping me the command how to drop this table i don't want this table now what is the syntax what is the command to drop it so it's very simple drop table table name drop table table name so now what i need to do now um, i need to select 
the database first so i need to select uh, i need to select um, dbt 24th may batch and now i need to do a drop drop table employee okay so now execute this okay dbo is optional dbo dot employee dbo is optional uh, so the default schema is dbo but if you have any other schema you might need to give there so now i'll execute this that's it now now if i refresh it let me refresh it i don't see tables here okay now let's try to understand uh, more about creating tables and what are the constraints we have and all those things okay so now let me open a pdf which i have uh, i have very good material for this i'll be sharing with all of you uh, so now let me open this okay so now i uh, i'll be creating i'll be crea creating a table with these columns employee table with these columns employee id first name last name department salary and date of birth okay so before that let's try to explain some of the data types which we use uh, okay so now let's try to understand what is a primary key okay so so just a second okay so let's try to understand what is the use of primary key and what is exactly a primary key okay before that uh, employee table the table name is employee so can you guys tell me what are the what could be the possible attributes for an employee so first thing is employee ID uh, employee ID and an EMP EMP first name uh, let me put F name and then what else we can have we can have l name sometimes we might need to have middle initial or surname as well okay uh, that is fine okay i'll give middle initial so first name last name or or let me put this name uh, middle name or or okay middle name okay so whatever and then uh, and then very important thing salary otherwise people don't work right salary and uh, employee ID, first name, last name, middle name, salary, and and address we will have. Other than address, we can actually think of date of birth and uh, hiring date. Yeah, hire date, join date. Last one. Anything else which you think of for employee? Employee ID, first name, last name, middle name, salary, date of birth, manager name, department ID. Yeah, department ID okay very good okay so now let's assume that we have these many things so now I have some assume that I have some five employees here assume that I have five employees in this table can you tell me the column which differentiates uh, oh, okay one more thing very important thing is that every employee in a company in a company will have uh, how do they communicate with each other we missed that uh, attribute how do they communicate with each other which with each other all the employees will have yeah yeah they communicate with the email so let's put this email id or let let me put after this uh, first name and last name okay so let me put here email id okay now questions so so imagine i have some five records so which column uh, which column do you think will be different for all the rows for sure that should be different so how do you identify how do you differentiate each employee yeah so we differentiate employees using employee ID so no two employees will have the same employee ID for sure no two employees will have the same employee ID all the employees will have different employee ID okay now assume that I don't have this employee ID column which column do you think will play the role of employee ID which column do you think will be different for all the employees no I don't think date of birth will play the role because two employees can have the same date of birth do you agree with me all of you date of birth cannot play the role of uh, um, date of birth cannot play the role of primary key because date of birth can be same for two employees yeah yeah so I see response saying email ID perfectly right email ID will be unique for email ID will be unique for all the employees so email ID can also be a primary key 
okay so let me drop off this column as well now can you tell me which is a, which is the column that can play the role of primary key which is unique for each employee which can be unique for each employee no last name cannot be unique some of you saying last name last name cannot be unique because some of the employees for example uh, for example if you think uh, department id cannot be unique because uh, because salary also cannot be unique because uh, two employees can have the same salary join date also cannot be unique join date because join date can be same for two employees so using join date we cannot differentiate yeah i was expecting something like what sujata has said uh, you can have a composite primary key uh, employee id can be there but we don't have employee id as of now uh, in this columns i'm asking question for those who just joined in these columns which can play the role of unique unique identifier for a particular employee first name cannot be play, cannot play the cannot be unique role because two employees can have the same first name yeah right so none of these are unique by themselves because all of them can repeat for employees two employees can have first name two employees can have same last name or two employees can have more than two employees can have same middle name salary obviously can be same date of birth very rarely but yeah two or more employees can have same date of birth join date yeah obviously people will have same joining date and department id completely employees will will can belong to the same department so in this case if you have a scenario for sure where you have to where you have to put uh, a join condition i mean you have to tell a uh, unique key you can join more than one column you can combine more than one column for um, uh, for a primary key so do you think combination of first name last name and middle name will form uh, will form can form primary key can be unique for all the employees how many of you agree with me that a combination of first name last name and middle name will be unique for all the employees oh nobody is agreeing is it oh there are chances like uh, chances like the combination also can be same for example for example uh ravi uh ravi verma and middle name say for example um abai ravi verma okay so do you think that uh, another employee can have the same first name last name and middle name okay okay i thought i thought you will say uh, you will say we will not have we will not have the combination i thought anyway so in that case what is the solution so for that reason for that reason we need to have uh, maybe we might need to with uh, date of birth or we might need to do some magic but still there might be uh, i don't think this columns will make will be suffice for differentiating the column so we need to have the previous columns which we have so what are the columns we have email id and employee id so employee id will be for sure which is unique for all the employees so employee id will play will play the role of role of primary key so i repeat now the purpose of primary key is to act as the differentiator between each employee okay remember a primary key uh, no two no two rows of a primary key will be duplicate for example if you have employee id 1 okay yeah i'll explain about the composite key uh, later so composite key is the combination of composite key is the combination of more than one column which can act like a primary key so so in some companies where for for example uh, i'll i'll tell i'll give one example where uh, we can use composite key as uh, so i thought i thought you will be telling like first name last name and middle name i thought you all will tell no two employees will have same uh i thought you will you will uh, say okay for uh, first name last name and middle name combination no two employees will have but still some of you are telling like there might be chances like uh, we can have the same first name last name and middle name combination for multiple employees okay at least i guess uh, okay it can be there uh, yeah i'm not saying i'm not denying the fact okay this three combination also can can vary okay so i'll tell about composite key later so for now for now uh primary key is something like which is used for differentiating that particular employee from other employees and a primary key should be should be different for all the rows i mean duplicate values are not allowed for a primary key and 
and the third point is a primary key cannot be null value a primary key cannot be null value it should be it should have some value okay and it should be unique i mean it it will not allow duplicate values it should be unique for all for each row so that is called a primary key okay and remember a table can have only one primary key okay i repeat the points i repeat the points about primary key and one of you should explain this okay a primary key is used to differentiate a primary key is used to differentiate uh, the records uh, differentiate a record from other records and a primary key cannot have duplicate values second point second point is a primary key cannot have duplicate values and third point a primary key cannot be null a primary key cannot have null values it should have value null is something like no values is called null okay and the last point a primary key a table can have only one primary key okay so okay a table must have only one primary key it cannot have more than one primary keys okay now uh now let's try to understand um some of you are asking cluster index okay i'll tell what is cluster index later yeah okay so now who wants to explain the four points which i have discussed i'll make you as uh, i'll unmute you so who wants to take this up you can ping me i just need the four points who wants to explain okay okay so kavita wants to try i'll unmute kavita so yeah you can explain the four points for all of us um we are not able to hear you others are you able to hear or is it problem with my microphone with my speakers Yeah yeah i think now we Hello? yeah now we are able to hear yeah go ahead please okay the primary key you can use to differentiate from one record to another record okay and a table must have only one primary key okay and the primary key cannot be a null value okay it can i mean null value is like it could be zero but it could not be null value okay and uh, it should be a uh, unique cannot be repeated perfect okay perfect yeah very good so thank you kavita thank you very much okay so it's clear now for me uh, the four points have been clarified and one more question which i got now is um one more question which i got now is um is it possible that the table uh, that the table does not have a primary key yes primary key is not mandatory so sometime back i created a table so sometime back here i created a table employee which is not having primary key so it is not necessary uh, for a table to have a primary key okay but still uh, if you have it that's well and good that's how we can differentiate from other records okay so yeah any other questions um, so i'm seeing some more questions um, it can be zero also right uh, that depends uh, that depends if you uh, if you add zero once it will agree because because it uh, it should not be duplicate but it can be zero but real time employee id cannot be zero in reality employee id cannot be zero for that we need to find ways how to restrict it uh, not to be zero okay so now let me show let me show the code how to create a uh, how to create a primary uh, table okay so let's go back to the material which i have okay so here is the table uh, creating table so now i have a table employee i am creating a table employee with employee id with identity column i'll tell what is an identity column so i have first name varcat20 that means uh, that uh, the name can vary from first name can vary from one character to 20 characters that is the reason why i have used varcat and if the characters are fixed characters i'll be using cat data type cat20 varcat is for varying names Uh, why I used varchar here is some employees might have five characters first name. Some employees can have ten characters. Some employees can have even fifteen characters first name. So for that reason, I have selected varchar data type and uh, not null. Not null indicates that if you try to insert null value for this first name, it will not allow you. Okay, first name should cannot be null. Uh, you can have gaps. uh so you can have gaps in varchar 20 okay so we'll see that now null indicates that it can be null 
so last name i have mentioned null that means it can allow nulls okay department where care 15 it can allow nulls and salary and this is called a check constraint okay so i'll explain what is an identity column uh, in some time so a check constraint will ensure that you cannot insert a negative value now so when you are inserting a record so let's try to see how to insert records into database okay now now uh, let me open SQL Server, and now we will try to create table now. So, so I'll be I'll be using this uh, this code. I'll select all this, and right click on this. Or before that, I want to explain you identity column. So let's not let me not use this now. Let me create a table now. So create table employee. I'm I'm going to create my own table now. I'm giving here employee ID integer, and then. I'll I'll tell you what is the importance of primary key now. So employee ID integer and employee name where cat twenty. So now I have given this. Um, so the use of this comma. Someone is asking what is use of this comma. Comma is to differentiate the columns. So since we have only two columns, I just gave comma here, and the last column doesn't require a comma. So for the last column, you don't need a comma because that is the last column. Okay. So now this is how you create a table. I'm just creating this. Now let's try to add the records for it. So how to add the records? We need to add using insert command. So insert into employee and then I need to give the column names. What are the column names? Employee ID comma. What is the second column name? Employee name. Values. I need to give the respective values here. I need to give the respective values. So employee ID 1. I need to give the name as Meghna. So this is the first employee. Now I have created a table employee ID and employee name. So now I'm going to insert the first record in the, into this table. So all I need to do is select this and then execute. Click on execute. Now uh, one record has been inserted. So let's try to insert another record saying for example 2 and then Ravi. Now let me execute this. Now if, 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 I, want to, uh, if I want to execute this, if I want to execute this, uh, if I want to see the data, select star from employee home F5. So I can see all the records in the table. So if I want to execute, if I want to see the records in the table, I need to execute select star from select star from employee. Okay, star indicates uh, star indicates all the columns. If you want to see all the columns from the table, uh, you need to put select star from employee. Okay and if you want to see only particular uh, column so you need to give the column name here so you need to give employee name here employee name select employee name for so if i execute this i'll see only employee names if i give star here i can see all the employee names select star from employee you will see all the employee all the columns okay now i have not used i have not used um any primary key or anything I have not used so if I try to insert employee employee ID 1 again let me try to insert employee ID 1 with name Bharat so the disadvantage of uh, not having primary key see now I am trying to insert employee ID employee name 1 and Bharat but if you see in the table I already have employee ID 1 for Meghna so now I am trying to insert 1 for Bharat so if I execute this it will not throw any error it has inserted but but i don't want this to happen because if i try to if i try to see select star from employee i can see two employee ids two employees with same employee id so i don't want this to happen so for that reason what i can do is i can make this uh, i can make this employee id as employee id as a primary key a primary key will not allow duplicate values okay okay so now what i need to do now I need to make this as primary key. How to make this as primary key? Just give space and primary key. Okay, so now I have a question. How to drop this table? I already have employee table created. So I'm going to add uh, create a table again with primary key. So I can do that using alter statement, but still let me drop the table. So, so drop table employee. Now let me execute this. Now what I need to do, I have added employee ID integer primary key. So let me execute this. Now let's try to insert duplicate values. Okay, let's come from the beginning. I will insert Magnat. Now I'll ex copy this. I'll paste it again. 
now I'll put here 2 I'll put here Ravi I'll put 1 here and I'll try to put again here Bharat okay now I have this primary key in place so let's try to see what happens now when I try to execute so let me H2K emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.